Lamrock Park was 40 minutes of pure stress for the drivers. Laps flying by in just 55 seconds means there's a lot of opportunities to make the same mistakes over and over again. Not only that, but for we pack the traffic was thick all the way to the pit stop cycle. Pit stop cycle is the word of the game. Sonny Kanchin, in contention for P1 for most of the first stint, got himself a 15 second stop and go penalty, sealing the deal on his hopes to make it 2 for 2. Robert Hartley was also very much in contention for that first place, but pit stop, especially the pit stop of Maxim Boonvish, got him uh, behind Boonvish because of a shorter pit stop or because of a fuel saving strategy. Bjornvich saw the checkered flag first, but Hartley also had smiles to re uh, reasons to smile because he is the points leader coming into round three. And after just two races of 10 complete, it's hard to pick a championship favorite. One thing is set in stone though, you won't miss any of the action of Big C's MX5 Challenge Season 2 here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. With that, we welcome you all in from virtual Wisconsin to the GTR Countdown 2 Green. Over the next few minutes, we'll bring you all the storylines, stats and facts you'll need to be up to date with Big C's MX5 Challenge. As the name already suggests, this segment is sponsored by GTR Racing Simulators, which are currently used as training aids for professional race car drivers. But you too can learn to ace that braking, sharpen those corners and shave off those vital seconds. Whether you're a professional driver or a gamer looking for a more immersive way to play, GTR has your back. Get started today at www.gtrsimulator.com And the crew today wishing you a very happy Easter are Chris Bobby joining myself, Stefan Schlacher. Turning the knobs and pushing the buttons behind the scenes is our director Sean Crackers Ambrose and he's using camera as provided by the great Dougie Beard. For the very first time this season, we do not drive on a free track. Not only that, but Road America is about two times as long as Okia meant, two and a half times as long as last week's track. So, Chris, what can it tell us about America's National Park of Speed? Well, this is one of the iconic tracks as far as American road racing goes. 4.048 miles or 6.5 kilometers in length. We have 14 turns, 9 to the right, 5 to the left. And we're located not too far from my home base in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Uh, road America opened in 1955 and the challenging circuit has remained largely unchanged since then. Many of the greatest road racers from around the world have credited the circuit for being incredibly easy to drive, but very hard to be fast at. Many have even said due to the length of the course, it's easy to get lost. Look for great passing opportunities around turns 5 and 6, as well as a lot of excitement around the kink, as well as Canada Corner. And now, to take us on a high-speed tour of Road America is our very own Joe Peak. All right, we've got Stefan Schlocker in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Road America. Down the front stretch, this is one of the prime places to use the draft to slipstream by your opponent. You can still try to outbreak them through turn one, but it's so much easier to pass them on the straight. Plus, the exit of turn one can sometimes catch drivers out by clipping the grass and sending them spinning to the opposite wall. From there, you've got a slight downhill into turn three. This is one of the most important corners on the track because of it leading onto the moraine sweep. You really don't want to overdrive your entry because it'll leave you a sitting duck on the way down to five. You'll essentially just straighten out the stretch here, so we'll skip this part and jump to the braking for the next corner. Here at five, the little bit of a kink in the downhill entry makes it very easy to outbreak yourself. In fact, a lot of race ending accidents happen on the first lap when things get stacked up here. After that, you climb back up towards six. The crest right at the entry makes it a very narrow margin of error to hit the fast line. Plus, you won't be able to spot your apex until you're pretty committed. That takes us towards turn 7, which is easily flat out in the MX-5, but I still wouldn't advise trying it too wide. Now, as we come through the hurried downs, you've reached turn 8. This offers chances for a sneak attack because of it being a relatively slow corner. If someone is tucked up behind you, keep your guard up. Immediately, you've got to switch sides to set up for the carousel. As in every car, patience is required to not let it drift out into the marbles and dirt. And yet, because the MX-5 isn't that high-powered, squaring off the exit is going to be critical to a good lap. Fail to keep your momentum and everyone's going to be on the attack. But before you hit the fastest part, you've got to swing through the kink which is also flat out in the Miata. Just pray that you don't catch traffic and get slowed up. Jumping forwards to the end of the kettle bottoms, the braking for Canada Corner tends to cause accidents through miscommunication or just plain coming in too hot. 
This is where you finally leave the thick woods and return to the sunshine of Bill Mitchell Bend. The car likes to get squirrely over this blind crest, and you could find yourself with some serious damage if you overcorrect the car. You won't have much time before you're chucking it into the final corner. This is another one where I'd advise not overdriving the entry. The front stretch is the longest straight on the circuit, and it has this crazy steep uphill climb to boot. Every ounce of speed that you can get from the engine of the MX-5 will count. But hopefully, if you've kept it all together, you've now finished a lap around Road America. That was our very own Joe Peak doing what nobody can do better, talking you a lap around the fast circuit of Road America. But now let us take you a quick lap around the championship standings, which are incredibly tight after these two races, as Robert Hartley is leading the championship standings with 46 points to his name ahead of Sonny Kanshin, with a 45 just a single point behind a racing out of Australia. Um, he lost the uh, championship lead because of his fifth place at Lime Rock Park. Maxim Bonovic jumps up to third after his sixth, uh, after being sixth in the first race with his win. Shaman uh, Damasis Torres, nine points in total behind after fourth and a third place. And then we have Andreas cuts 32 points to his name or 14 points behind Robert Hartley uh, after fourth and a fifth in the two opening rounds of today so as you can see the very tight points uh, make this a very tight championship standing right now and talking about height how are we looking on the race details chris well another fun one in store for us this afternoon stefan we this is our third of 10 rounds for the big c's mx5 challenge series this is a 40 minute race with one required pit stop it is a fixed setup uh, there is no incident cap and the top 15 will score points, and there are two fast repairs at their disposal, if uh, so needed. Yeah, hopefully nobody is going to need that today, but you never know with uh, the close racing that we always have in this series. And talking about close, well, qualifying right now isn't really, because we have a full second between only the top nine. It's not something we see very often as the first... Um, uh, seven minutes have already passed, so we have already pretty much a lot of times in here. 24, which is about half the field, has already put in a lap. Um, and on top of the standings right now, Jackson Robillard racing out of New Jersey in his number 98. He's about two tenths ahead of Clifford Evan, who seems to have found some pace in coming into Road America. So I got to imagine this this uh, qualifying session a little different than what we've seen in our past two races where you probably want to be in a pack of cars here to get a bit of a slipstream is that correct uh, i would i would guess so i'm always uh most of the time when we come to uh racetracks like road america or monza in in slower cars like the mx5 is i'm always comparing that to like a moto 3 session or a nascar session because they always come out in packs and get quite furiously with the defending their draft. Let's see if Jackson Robila and Clifford Ebben right behind each other uh, can improve their times. Clifford Ebben right in front. That's actually also Boonvish who now jumped up to first place with a 32.9 clearing Jackson Robila by full 10th. Yeah, it looks like Robillard going to call it good on this lap. As you can see, a lot of people are coming in right now to take pit stops, and someone just jumped quite high up. There was Robert Hartley putting in his first lap, jumping up to seventh place. That's actually that's actually a bit down the running order for Hartley, isn't it? Um, we have seen him be a bit lower in the qualifiers already, first and second race, so. I'm not that surprised, but he is. The pace difference is 6 tenths, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue for Robert Hartley either. You know, this series has been very impressive with how close all these drivers have been, whether in qualifying or in, in uh, race setups. 
I think that is a baseline racing for you sometimes, especially in uh, these slower cars, even though you can do quite a lot in the MX-5 with the setups. The baseline setup is quite good because we're racing it in the rookies as Ionis Mimelodis climbs the hill up to the start finish line, start finish line quite a long ways down from the last turn. And Ionis Mimelodis crosses the line with a 34.2 knot, improving on his lap time. And right behind him was Dirk Federmann, who improved himself into fifth position. Rui Coimbra right now sitting on a 35.4. Can he improve? No, he cannot. Did not count that last one. So no improvement for him. This has got to be probably the most frustrating place to get an off track or some kind of penalty that negates your lap because it's a two and a half minute lap. You're given so much time just trying to just trying to get back for another attempt. Yeah, exactly, and the next guy to come over the line is actually Brian Sabelski. So let's see what he can do racing out of Ohio. Uh, 35.9, he does improve, but I don't think he actually improved in position. Vostrel coming over the line did not count for him, so he stays on his 35.247. Probably had an off track somewhere. Or just came out of pit lane. It's amazing the difference in, uh, you know, the difference that makes going from such a short course last week with uh, Lime Rock Park that we're seeing the complete opposite of. To yeah, like it seems like the front str uh, straight is already longer than the whole Lime Rock Park. At least it feels that way. Um, as we have had on the screen, Hector Goddard, who did not improve. So he stays in 20th. Uh, Christina Nazarik was there in the last turn, but I think she stopped actually. So we're now looking, uh, having our eyes on Jackson Robilar, who still sits in third place. Actually, Robert Hartley did improve on his last lap. I completely missed that. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, Robert Hartley is now in first by nearly two tenths over Maxime Bunbisch. That's a pretty, uh, pretty impressive margin for Hartley there. I know there was a couple tenths uh, last week as well, but really these guys have all been, for the most part, fairly close in qualifying, so any gap that significant is uh, pretty impressive. Let's see what Liam Sheen can do over the line. Did not count for him, so I'm just going to assume that was an uh, outlap for him. And let's have a look. Where are our leaders currently? They're going into the kink right now. Uh, it's actually going to be interesting. Oh, Maxim Boonvich just took an off track through the king, so he's not going to improve on his lap. But the first three are literally nose to tail right now. Uh, Hardly also gave up on his on his fastest lap as Nick Carty is getting overtaken there up to the line. Nick Carty. 35.3, so that wasn't a fast run for him. The car overtaking him was Melina Mann. Also not a, oh, that was actually a fast lap, up to 18th with a 34.5454. Jackson Robila going into pit lane, Robert Hartley stays out. Ahead of him that was Maxim Bunvich, he's also going into pit lane, but Robert Hartley stayed out and he's gonna take the pretty much white flag for him. Because there's one minute 10 left and obviously a lap is 2 minutes 32 so he's never going to be able to complete this lap in time to have another shot. So this is literally the last chance qualifying to maybe put down his mark here in this qualifying. Yeah, so with these two and a half second laps, I mean, gosh, this race is going to feel like a five lap shootout. 
Now, I want to talk about this real quick. Robert Hartley is following Shame, the Moses Torres. And Torres, with his number 13, only down in 13th right now. So, yeah. Quite a bit out of norm for Torres to be well outside the top 13. Yeah, Torres has been a pretty prolific qualifier here in the early rounds of this season. So yeah, that's uh that's really out of out of character for him. And he even had to give up that lap as we saw Robert Hartley going past. Um, having a look right now who is gonna else finish his lap and seems like Rui Coimbra is coming over the hump right now to finish his qualifying sitting still in 27th with a 35-4-6-3. Let's see if Rui can improve. Nope. Computer says no. Let's see with Melina Mann here in the green car taking the last corner beat. Gingerly, I would say they're not using all the track that is available right behind Melina, that is the yellow car of Stephen von Opstel. Let's see what they can do over the line. Melina Mann does not improve. Stephen von Opstel also doesn't improve. So they stay where they were. Let's see if Robert Hartley finishes his lap. Coming out of the last turn, he stays straight. So maybe he's on a good lap. Let's watch him come over the hump and over the finish line. 32.718 standing to his name. This one was a 34.2, so not a fast lap at all by Robert Hartley. Seems like the last few cars are finishing. Robert Mason coming over the line now. Sitting in 20th. Does not improve as Alaric Funny Boss. Comes out of the last turn. Not having scored a single lap yet in qualifying. So this is his last attempt. 36.7. Putting him up into 33rd position. But I believe it's now time for the Sim Racing Studio starting grid. Uh, want to enhance your Sim Racing experience but don't feel like spending hours doing it? Sim Racing Studio creates... Uh, plug and erase a sim erasing accessoire and software to enhance your experience without any DIY effort. Go to www.simracingstudio.com for more information. And on top of the charts of your sim erasing studio starting grid is the name of Robert Hartley, about two tenths ahead of Maxime Bonvish and Jackson Ribola in third place. Alongside him will be the league organizer of Clifford. Evan. Stephen von Opstel taking away 5th place, alongside him will be Dirk Federmann. Christian Lindrod in 7th place, Marcelo Pannan 8th, he is a new name to this series, but not to MX5 Racing whatsoever. But David Hampson is 9th place, alongside him will be Brian Holmes rounding out your top 10 of today's field. And yeah, we got some heavy hitters on the second page, Ionis Mumaludis. In 11th spot with Sonny Kanchin beside him. Yami Demalsas Torres next up in line in 13th with Nigo Arvelomi in 14th. 15th is Jan Terho in 15th with Steve Hefford and Mark Brightman next up in line. Melina Mann, Ronnie Kotz, and Robert Mason are going to complete your top 20 starters. Blackjack is Nick Carty alongside him. Uh... Hector Goodet, Simon Appleding and Peter Foster round out a row 12. Diogo Fennes in 25th and the number 5 of Chad Lieberger is in 26th. Rui Coimbra who we saw trying to better his lap sits in 27th. Alongside him will be Corey Hart. Alex Hunt 29th and Adam Mariak running out your top 30 for the day. 31st on the grid is going to be Brian Zabelski with Arturi Sorati next up in line. Alaric Vandenboss will be in the double threes with Nicholas Gonick in 34th. Lawrence Coleman next up in line with Peter Knowles and Liam Sheen completing your drivers that took a time. And then 
Tom Athen and Graham Sanders and Lewis Morga are listed in the top 40. The last few cars also not to take a qualifying time are Brian Molitor, John Nielsen, Christina Nazarek, Frank DeAngelis, Jack Myers and Casey Drake. And that is your full 46 car field for the day. And the last few cars are actually starting well up or well down the slope rather. So they are going to face quite an uphill challenge on the start. And of course, wasn't heard by uh, by the general public, but once again, just a, a rousing pre-race speech by series director Cliff Eben. Yeah, even I'm feeling motivated now to call this race, <laughs> even more than I was already. But yeah, they always put on a great show. And also a little bit of a eureka moment for us, because for the very first time, we're going to get a little bonus check for running down the whole field before the green flag drops. Yeah, I think this is the first time we made it through the whole lineup since the season started, Stefan. Yeah, it's a good thing that uh, Road America is such a long track, so we were able to do that. We should go more often to long tracks like this one. And, I mean, iRacing is, does a tremendous job of getting these tracks all scanned in, and this place looks beautiful in real life and as well here on uh, on the grid today. As the engines finally start to harmonize, well, let's see who can get the best start as the green flag is flying and they are off. Robert Hartley, great start to him, no contention at all. But Stephen van Opstel already up to fourth place. Maybe even getting a third place or at least a challenge for third place as he's alongside with Jackson Robillard now. But round the outside, it's gonna be hard for him. Can he stay in third? Still side by side, they go. But he has the momentum now to him. Into turn three they go and he has well clear checks on Robilar who tries to come back on the brakes but has to give up that search for P3. Well Stefan, the hamsters under the hood are working overtime to get these MX5s up to speed on this long and winding course and we have a battle up front as well. Yeah, and Boonvich trying to do what uh, probably is the most sensible pushing Robert Hartley away from everyone else because they have a required separation here down to third place yeah road racing not where you expect to see uh, so much bump drafting so to speak but uh, Maxim Gunovic giving a shove to Robert Hartley as those two try to break away from the rest of the field yeah fingers crossed that we stay clean for the remainder of this first lap as so far I don't see any smoke or anything happening so yeah great start for everyone yeah as we mentioned during the lineup we had some heavy hitters start a little bit deeper in the field Ionis Mumbaludis and Sonny Kanchin both starting outside of the top 10 two of uh, the heavy hitters in these MX-5 cars and what kind of progress are we seeing them make so That's still 11th place, but I think the P1 are side by side. And yes, indeed, Maxime Boonvich actually overtook Robert Hartley. They are 4 P1. I think that was a little bit of a tactics there. So, yeah, Maxime Boonvich overtook Robert Hartley for the lead. Something Robert Hartley is already accustomed to from last round. And behind everything stays the same. Stefan Opstal leading the pack ahead of Jackson Robilla, Cliff Evan, and Dirk Federmann. Let's see if Robert Hartley strikes back or if he pushes Maxime Boonvich. Yes, indeed, he slots in behind, pushes him. Jackson Robilla, let's see if he's doing the same. No, he's not even getting up to the pack of uh, Stephen von Obstal. Stays behind and opts not to push, but to save fuel. And after all that, that was just one lap. Yeah, Lamrock Park, we would have done three laps here. And so but that's the joy of having different racetracks all over the world. Not only do we see a lot of locations, but also a lot of different 
racing stars and racing tracks and right now Bright Holmes and Sonny Kenshin are side by side that's for P9 all the way down there and Sonny Kenshin gets pushed past by Shawi Damasis Torres so yet again two drivers are quite accustomed to be actually way more up the field and they are right now and actually three wide now that's Yonis Mimolud is taking it three wide on the inside there little bit of a push and bang and that's two cars going off the road that was Shaman Damasis Torres and Brian Holmes not leaving each other enough room there tremendous job staying out of the sand trap though I thought that they were headed right off the track I mean they both did a great job to keep it on court seems like Brian Holmes is hurting quite a bit though because he's limping his car right now on the grass Yep, Holmes has parked it on the side of the road. He may be using one of those quick fixes. Let's see, however, here for P3. Will anything happen? Jackson Robula has quite a run. Does not utilize it, though, so he once again stays behind Steve. there but does not really hurt his speed even though he was with pretty much three wheels on the gravel truck there up in front of two leaders Robert Hartley is still in behind Maxime Dunvish so they are trying to execute uh, tandem racing so to speak Let's compare the last lap times. Uh, Stephen van Opsen with a 233.2 compared with a 32.9 for Robert Hartley. So leaders are running away from your pack for P3. Is Robert Hartley actually quite a bit of a mistake that runs quite wide out of turn one. Yeah, it almost seems like it was by design in the early running that these two drivers pushed themselves away from the field. And now that they've got a bit of a gap over third place, it seems like the gloves are off and they're all over the track trying to get around each other. Yeah, you're, you're pretty much seeing it there already. They are just, their start was so tremendous, they got off the line very well. And I think what really kicked that uh, that gap into place was Stephen Obsel, his tremendous start. Uh, jumping from fifth into third, going into turn two. Um, so, yeah, pretty much you could say if he wouldn't have had such a good start, Jackson Robolab might be up there and challenge the guys for P1 as we go on board with Rob Hadley right there. Such an awesome camera. Oh, sorry, we're on, actually Robila. It's understood our director there. Either way, it's a great view. From Jackson Robbie last car up to Steve Van Opstam. Yeah, those uh, in car cameras are totally tremendous. And so, uh, towards the middle of the pack, it's a bit of a hornet's nest, as our director described it. We have uh, quite a few cars in the mix uh, all over this place. Yeah, and Janet Terho was able to get away that. Uh, P18, sorry, P16 from uh, Adam Mariak. Let's see if Adam can strike back. Very close to the back. He's not getting a push from Graham Sanders. That's going to give him some overspeed. Look at that speed advantage of Adam. Will Yane be able to strike back on the break? No, he will not. Or yes, he will. No, he not. But now he's also under contention by Graham Sanders. And instead of going one up, he goes one down. Yeah, probably the fact that these are cars that are a bit limited more limited on speed and uh, the fact this is such a big course. These guys staying all pretty close together. Uh, no no breakaways towards the middle of the pack. And it seems like we once again are getting close with Robert Hartley and Maxime Boonvich. But... Yeah, we're not 100% sure if they're actually trying to battle or just saving fuel. Um, 
gonna take you once again back to Lamrock Park where we saw Maxim Boomwish be behind Robert Hadley for the first stint, for the complete first stint. And him then jumping Robert Hadley in the pit lane because of the shorter pit stop for him. And I think Robert Hadley is trying to get back atop with exact the exact same strategy here. Now, do you think, is he is he trying to make the pass or is he just trying to make Budovic maybe work a little bit harder? Maybe he n realizes what happened last week and he's trying to make sure your leader gets uh, pushed to the limit so he can't possibly pull that under. Well, um, I think Robert Hadley, as long as he stays in the top three, he's pretty much in a safe spot right now. But also, I think he's realizing that Stephen van Opstal is getting closer to himself and Maxime Boombish as we jump you down to P12. Actually, we're now going back to P16. That's on board with Graham Sanders there. Well, Sanders got a little bit of a, a clear track around him, but he's got some competition that's heating up behind him. Yeah, Yanitero trying to do the same thing again as last time around with Adam. Mariak, but this time he tried to do it around the outside. Doesn't work for the pair, so for these cars he had, so he had to slot in behind. And the pack yet still continues trying to chase down your two leaders. We're right now focusing our eyes on Marcelo Pagnal sitting in 8th position. Dirk Federmann, it seems like he's struggling a little bit to keep up that gap or keep up the pace with the three guys ahead of him because he's having about 5-6 uh, car lengths in between himself and the car of Clifford Eben. Yeah, Eben and, and Robillard were two drivers that had uh, pretty impressive performances in qualifying, so Fetterman doing his best to stay up in the mix, but there's a lot of quick cars here today. So it looks like pit road starting to heat up a little bit, Stefan. Yeah, in interestingly enough, it uh, seems like these guys can. Uh, choose their pit stop whenever they pretty much want Yanitero in the pit lane. Let's see if he's taking towers or not. There's a completely destroyed car behind him of Stephen Hefford. Uh, Get word of uh, Robert, Robert Mason taking tires down in the pit lane. Yeah, Hector Godet is also not taking any tires. Robert Mason actually taking four tires. That's gonna slot him back quite a lot. As our drivers have told us already multiple times in their interviews, two tires or no tires, otherwise you're going nowhere. As uh, Yanetero is side by side coming out of the pit lane with Peter Fostro. Uh, going into turn three right now, Yane on his newer tires, able to brake later, but Fostro trying to do the undercar doesn't work but he has more momentum out of turn three. This is now a drag race down to turn five. These two cars side by side as we head towards the corner. Uh, starting to lose ground now as Taro pulls ahead. Taro with that better upshift there over Peter Monstro has to slide in behind. Going into turn five, let's look in behind. Nobody fighting off the guys who also did hit the uh, exit the pit lane. This is, by the way, all the way down in P32. Getting themselves all the way out of traffic. So what do you think about these drivers pulling into the pits uh, just 12 minutes into the... Uh, it makes me question if they make it on pit or, or on, on fuel or not. Um, but I'm gonna guess they are able to make it on field because otherwise they wouldn't pitch right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to call these races, I tell you that much. Yeah, I think 40 minutes is kind of an interesting uh, an interesting amount of time to have to make 
the fuel last in these cars. Yeah, not only that, but we know that uh, Clifford Evan, the organizer of this league, is actually limiting the fuel at the start a little bit, only puts in 3.3 gallons. So to force them really make a pit stop and not be able to maybe save fuel until the end and do without a pit stop. Yeah, I definitely enjoy uh, the required pit stop, and we've seen such varied pit strategy across the board uh, in some of these races when when uh, the strat when the excuse me the pit calls aren't as uh, are a little more straightforward. Usually, you see the whole field pit at one time, and that kind of makes for a boring race. But the way things are laid out in this series, it really has a lot of variety, and really, as we saw last week, allows for some interesting strategy plays. Always when I hear forced pit stop, I always have to think about Stevie Ray, the organizer of the Weekend Warrior Series. He's always in these races, the first guy to pit uh, whenever the pit uh, cycle is open. He immediately slots himself into the pit lane. Always a good indicator for uh, the pit stop being available to the drivers, no matter where he is. If there's a forced pit stop, he's the first. But we're right now down for the battle for 16th. That is Aturi Sorati, Nick Carty, and Alex Hunt. There's about 6th, 10th, 7th between these three cars. And these are the guys that are just outside of the points paying position, so you gotta believe with everything on the line, these guys are gonna be fighting to be the first one next in line to fall into a points paying position. Actually, here we're seeing it quite nicely. It's actually a pack of three cars. Top of the first three are much closer, though Nick Cardi actually, interestingly enough, slamming the brakes there in the straight line to not be able to overtake Arturi Sarati. It made Alex Hunt run nearly into the back of him, who, because of that, gets now attacked by Nico Arvilomi. Carty trying left, trying right, but just no door opening whatsoever. A two right immediately starting over to the right, indicating he's gonna pit, and exactly that's what he does. Nick Carty getting a nice push from Alex Hunt up the hill, though. So, still a lot of variety in our pit strategy here. We have guys that have it's now been three or four minutes since. Although, you know, at this track, three or four minutes is actually just the next lap. And I'm um, sorry, something happened to Jackson Robila in Canada Corner just a few moments ago as he got... Wow, that was quite a heavy slap by Clifford Evan. Let's see if we can get you on that replay. There you see the crumbled back of Jackson Robila. Yeah, I know he and Cliff Eben have been battling for most of this race, and... See? Yes, it was into Canada Corner. I'm not sure if we can go there. Um, yeah, you can see heavy, heavy damage on, uh, on Robillard's car. Basically, I'm gonna talk to you. Ah, there we go. Our director found it. Great job by Sean, as always, there. And there you can see it now. Clifford Evan popping into existence. And Completely missing his breaking point, shooting Jackson Robila into the gravel zone. So we're going to ride along with Cliff Eben now as we take a look at the incident. So it just looks like a case of uh, Eben possibly running out of internet juice there, Stefan. Yeah, he, he's blinking for me already since the start, weirdly enough. Um, but yeah, Clifford Evan just completely missing his breaking point there. And Jackson Robila having to bury the, consen uh, bury the consen uh, consequences. I can talk. Um, as, who is that? Sonny Kenshin diving into pit lane. Alongside him, also Jackson Robila coming with him. Very long, very slow pit lane here at Road America. It's 
nearly as long as the pit lane at uh, the endurance pit lane at Spa from Peugeot, which is 985 meters long. And I think this one qualifies also quite well for the longest pit road in the world. As Nick Carty and Alex Hunt are side by side, Alex Hunt with the inside for turn one. Nick Carty actually a little bit on the brake there to let him pass. And Alex Hunt making the, end, the apex with ease, but not the exit curb. Let's see if Nick does something. No. Instead of pushing him, he jumps on the brake yet again. Yeah, it looks like Hunt left a pretty, uh, did a pretty well defensive line into the corner. It looks like. Uh, Cardi was thinking about maybe going to the inside, but didn't have enough room there. And interestingly enough, this wasn't the first time we saw Nick break instead of lifting. Yet again, he breaks, making Melina Munt behind him also break. Uh, not the smoothest driver as Nick Cardi. Now he gets a net coat pushed there by Melina. Yeah, eventually you can, you can only look at brake lights in that type of scenario a little bit too long before you have to take some action. And Alex Hunt all the way sideways. Can he avoid the wall? No, he cannot. Goes rear first into the wall. Turn six really catching him out there. Yeah, that's a that's tough break for break. Alex Hunt. Now, did it look like Cardi got him, or do you think it was just a little bit of oversteer there? No, he he just went way too wide, turn six, and then completely overcorrected. Up towards the final podium position, we have a just a hornet's nest on track there, as a Dirk Fetterman running in the P3 position at the moment. And everyone takes to the green stuff then instead of the black stuff and Marcelo Pena pits in now from fifth position. He goes into pit lane and oh and the lights just all switched on here at Road America for me. Stephen Opstel, however, trying to go around the inside, has to slot back in again. So we missed it sadly. Dick Federman he did overtake or P3. Um, if we have to pass, then yes, please. Um, I would be interested to see how Federman got from 5th into 3rd. Ah, there we go. It's down the Marine Sweep. Down. Oh, no, wait. That's actually into Canada corner. Wow. Oh, He's Canada. 4th there. Yeah, beautiful chop down the inside. But Steve van Opstel, he is back into P3 while we were on the replay. Uh, he drafted past Dirk Wiedemann, who then also did lift well before turn 5. They cleared each other. Um, so, Wiedemann in 4th gets a little bit of a bump there by Clifford Eben. Side by side going into turn 8 now. Preferred line through here, but pushes ever so slightly Dick Federman wide. And Federman not able to hold the inside through the carousel, so Clifford Eben moves him up into a fourth place position. Yeah, Federman just with a great move to get into that position, but these guys are uh, not going easy on him for sure. And all this battling really opened up the gap between Stephen van Opstal and Robert Huntley. It's now about five seconds between P2 of Robert Hartley and P3 of Steven van Opstal. There you have it, black on a white. 4.999 seconds there. Yeah, let's see. It's actually going to be interesting when they're going to pit. Now, Chris. Yeah, Steve Van Ops still answering, not answering my question right there. Um, <laughs> but Dirk Federman, he did pit. So he's pitting from P4, or sorry, P5. Um, 
it's actually now going to be interesting against Marcelo Pania, who is right now in Canada corner. But what I want to ask, Chris, um, how would you put out your pit stop right at the end or somewhere in between? You know, I think at a track like this, probably wait until the end would be better, uh, just because of the you know smaller fuel loads and and uh, just a clean run to the end. I I'd go with the later pitting myself. Nice. You see on your screen, Kaume Damasus Torres and Ionis Mouloudis also did pit in. And up front, it's still Robert Hartley. Probably right now, already knowing how to disassemble the back of uh, Maxime Boomvish. Marcelo Pania was the leader. A uh, pit stop. Uh, cleaned out and he still is your leader or sorry of the cars that did pit already and he remains to be your leader as Dirk Federmann is quite a bit behind we can also report Jackson Rubila he did take his free repair on his pit stop coming out stories at Ionis Mimuludis well behind As you can see, the two teammates trying to work together. There is Marcel Pania lets Sonny Kanjin past. Probably saying, you're the faster one, let's pull a multi-21 here. I'm a, I'm a Mark Webber fan, so every time I hear multi-21, I get a little twitchy. Uh, not only you, not only you. Uh, Clifford Ebben and Christian Lindrod are side by side right now for P4. Let's see if Christian can take away fourth here. Still side by side, out of Canada corner they go, but now Clifford Ebben with quite a better run. Actually way better than you, Stephen von Opstal. Not able to do anything as Stephen von Opstal goes defensive. They're both run very wide. Into the last turn they go. Will anyone take the pit stop here as the two leaders are taking the pit stall pit stop and everyone behind does so too so it seems that this is as far as they can go yeah with uh we're now under 15 minutes remaining in this race so i imagine the drivers from the, that haven't pitted yet gotta be getting a bit uh gotta be a bit dry Sonny Kanjin, one point behind Robert Hartley, your championship leader. Not only that, but he's also your defending champion. Boonvish still in his stall as Sonny Kanjin comes out of the last turn. Boonvish and Hartley still stationary. Both did take left side tires. There he goes now. Actually, Boomvish didn't take towers. Rob Hartley did, though. Sonny Kenshin going over the line. Now, this is going to be get close for these guys. Three wide eggs in pit lane. And oh, he man. clears them all except for Robert Hartley. And the battle pack in behind is again back together. As Jackson Robila had a little bit of a scary moment as everyone did pit out around him. So, with Hartley taking tires and Gunovic not, do you think it's going to make a big enough difference for Hartley to be able to fight back up from this one? I don't know. I mean, you have the carousel, you have the kink, but what's really important is will Robert Hartley, Sonny Kenshin, and Marcelo Panyan be able to work together and fight back up to the back of Maxim Boonvich? Or is Boonvich alone stronger than the three with Kraft? As he scares our director there a tiny little bit with his sideways action. And maybe without a partner there, he's uh, putting in a little extra effort to try to get a gap on the field. Our Sean called it there, our very own Sean Ambrose. He said sitting duck, so he probably expects. Sonny Kanji, Marcelo Panyan, Robert Hartley to catch your leader of Maxime Boombish. Let's see if he stays correct or not. Maxime Boombish, he 
is going to try though to stay ahead in the last remaining 12 or so minutes. In behind though, that's Dick Finneman trying to defend P6 from Steven van Opsel. Steven van Opsel very late on a break, way too late on a break. Goes onto the gravel trap, loses three positions as Christian Lintrod, Clifford Ebb and Jackson Obla all go past him. Well, you know, you go for those late breaking moves and sometimes they work out great and sometimes they go just like that. So, tough break for Van Opstrel, but you, you can't fault the guy for going for it. And Dirk Federmann yet again with a big mistake out of the last turn. If this would be Circuit of the Americas, he would have been fine, but this is not Circuit of the Americas. No paved runoffs or nearly none where it counts. Um, on this old version, the new version has quite some tarmac runoff areas. But Dirk Federmann right out sideways in the gravel trap was able to keep his car together and stay ahead of Jackson Robila. Fiercefully defending his fifth place in front of the four cars following him. Yeah, Robillard now has a bumper full of Cliff Eben. And Eben off in the grass trying to trying to find a way and is blinking out on us again. Yeah, I think it felt like Clifford Ebben didn't know anymore where the road was going, but Jackson Robilla side by side now with Dirk Federmann, same with Christian Lindrod and Clifford Ebben. They remain side by side up to turn six to go under the Corvette sign. Lindrod and Robilla with the inside, but cannot capitalize on that. Clifford Ebben and Dirk Federmann both defend their positions there. Great job. Yeah, so it looks like Eben and Robillard are going to be doing battle for position again. Up in front, I just want to report we don't need to go there. Robert Hartley did get caught now by Sonic Kenshin, so they are probably going to start working together to catch Maxime Boonvish. Yeah, I mean, with, with nine minutes to go at this track, I mean, that's not very many laps left to run, so it's probably going to be in their favor to link up and, and try to go for the front. Right now, four seconds between P2 and P1 as Jackson Robillard takes it yet again side by side for that P5 positions behind uh, Lintra tried to go side by side with Evan, not able to do so. Steve Van Opstel takes it two by two though. And Robillard and Steve Van Opstel both make the passes happen for P5 and 7 respectively, but Steve Van Opstel wants more goes side by side with P6 and in touch. Oh, Fetterman and Van Opstel both facing the wrong way. Fetterman slid right up on the track. We're going to take another look at it as these two drivers came together. Unlucky break there for both of them as they both spin out. And I think that was a moment of being a little bit too ambitious there. Steph Van Opstel goes on the very high inside curb put that which pushes him wide into Dirk Federmann, spins them both out and ruins both their races. However, it didn't ruin anyone's races for P6 as Clifford Ebb and Christian Lindrod still going at it. Yeah, it, it's kind of a bummer to see Fetterman and Van Opstel out of this battle because these uh, four or five cars were putting on quite the show probably the most exciting one on the track but now cliff Eben and jackson robillard getting ready to wage battle and, and as i say that we got another car joining the mix as well yeah cliff Eben did lift christian lindro did not whatsoever trying to make two for one here and indeed he must do so great job by christian goes from seven into fifth in just one turn Don't look now, but is that uh, Ionis Mumaludis lurking into the picture as well? That is the green car at the very back, but Robila trying to take back his P5, which he thinks is rightfully his, but is not able to carry any momentum on the inside. Actually now has to defend against Clifford M around the outside, and he is not able to do so. 
So that overtake or uh, attempted overtake on Christian, Christian Lindrod did backfire on him as he loses P5, a uh, P6 against Cliff Rem. Yeah, these guys with just a tremendous battle around this beautiful course. And yet again, getting boxed in. And so he has to lift, and Jackson Robila trying to make himself now two for one. Does, is he able to do so? Through Canada Corner, they go still side by side for that P5 position as Kamen Amasis Torres tries to push Christian Lindrod. Lindrod going all the way to the outside there, way wide. Is able to stay side by side though. And Kamenasis Torres now trying to take it three. What actually does do so? He has the momentum over both of them. Up the hill they go, under the canopy of sign they go. Kamenasis Torres has the speed over both of them. But the two in the back also are coming with them. And Ionis Mimoludis, and now they're all stalled up. Still three wide going into turn one. Who can break later? The answer is Christian Lindrod and he defends his P5. Wow, that was such a battle. I am completely impressed with how the great car control we're seeing from these guys today. Romanovas Historia strikes back yet again. He will says to himself, at least P6. I want to have at least that one. Um, he is now trying to get pushed by Clifford Evan, but the honest Mimoludis. Probably is now gonna slot in behind uh, Jackson Robila to try to actually pushes to tries to push it three wide on the grass. The German driver pushes it three wide on the grass. Can he keep it together on the braking? Yes, he can. Actually, still side by side with Jackson Robila, right out on the gravel trap. He goes still side by side into turn six. They go. Not giving up a single inch there as Kamenos has torrents locks tires a little bit with Jackson Robila, who is still on the inside here for turn seven, and he gets turned. Oh, we got three cars all in the mix. Oh my gosh, what a tough break. Oh man. Mumalutis, Robillard, all in caught up in that. Just a chain reaction incident, one getting into the other, getting into the other. Now, I don't like to hand out penalty cards, but if I would have to, that would be for Kamenamas' Torres, who did not line his car up with the car of Jackson Rubila, pushes him on the edge, on the corner of the car, and turns him around. Battle what? going on for P2 right now, Stefan, as Sonny Kanchin has the spot and Robert Hartley wants it. Yeah, and Marcelo Pania sitting in behind, looking at this. The pass for P2 was or quite a bit ago while we were watching the fierce battle for P5 in behind. Nonetheless, Robert Hartley yet again on the podium and let's see if he pushes him. Yes, he does. Actually, let's have a look at the lap times between Sonic Henshin and Maxime Boomvich. And looking at that, we can see Chris. Maxime Boomvich is running away. Yeah, we had uh, thoughts of possibly P2 and 3 linking up together and trying to push themselves to get up front to battle with Boomvich, but obviously that is not to be as Maxime is just had tremendous pace here in the closing minutes of this event. And pretty much as expected, Mumaludis and Robila are pitting because of the tremendous damage to their cars. Both taking a free repair and off they go again. Yeah, the, the drivers do have two free repairs at their disposal for this event. And both of those cars making hard contact with the concrete barriers and obviously needing some fixing up. The only guy to get out of that wreck on a good note was Kamen Amasis Torres, who is still fighting for that P6 against Clifford Epp into turn 5, into turn 6 to go, and he was able to defend that 6th position, position from Clifford Epp, but both of them have lost Christian Lindrod by about 
three seconds now. Yeah, Torres uh, still able to continue on, but looking at that car, he's very fortunate to have been hit where he was. Uh, looks like the, from what I could tell, the driver's side door took the brunt of that impact uh, when he was mixed up in the incident with uh, Robillard and Mumalutis. So uh, fortunate to not be hit in maybe that left front wheel and damaging the suspension. So he's able to continue on, although at that point the car is just about bowling shoe ugly. And Sonny Kenshin still leading Robert Hundley as we are going towards the white flag now. Maxim Bumlisch already in the last corner with 1 minute 14 to go. He will receive the white flag this time around. So only four more miles to go on this road course. And there he goes over the line taking us on board. On to his last lap he goes. Now before we seal off the deal, Director, let's jump down all the way to Nico Armilomi and the battle for P12. As I'm sorry I didn't see that, but Sonny Kanchin is actually trying to defend his P2 against Robert Hartley around the outside, trying to make that move happen, but Sonny Kanchin says, No sir, you're staying behind me. And how about that? No contact as they got just about close enough to exchange phone numbers there. As, oh, Sonny Kenshin running out of internet juice and Marcelo Ponyao. Woo -hoo -hoo. What a bump for his teammate. How did Sonny Kenshin keep that under control? Great management of bandwidth, I guess. Robert Hartley now to take from Marcelo Pania, who says, No, I'm not gonna take this to what who turn six. You can have your P3 for now. So getting back a little further in the field, Steven Van Opstel trying to eke out an eighth position after his adventurous as he's doing battle with Ronnie Cotts. No, I am missing someone here, though. Come on, this Torres. Something happened to him. We can't find it. Actually, it was out of turn one, and he had a massive shunt there. But um, P2 is once again off the charts fighting once Robert Hartley Trying to take it uh, around the outside into Canada Corner. Can he do some? Sonny Kanchi comes back yet again on the brakes. Showing why it's so hard to uh, uh, overtake him. But this time Robert Hartley able to do so. Coming onto the start finish straight though is Maxime Boonvish. Kanchi went pretty wide there. Was out in the grass. Uh, and giving up a little bit of room to... And... Boonvish is already coming under the Caterpillar sign and give it up for Maxime Boonvish, your winner of Big C's MX-5 Challenge Season 2 Round 3 from Road America. Robert Hartley finished in second place ahead of Sonic Engine and Marcelo Pania. So Robert Hartley making it three uh, P2s right there for the season opening. Christian Lindro taking home the fifth place of this race ahead of Clifford Ebben. And Dirk Federmann in 7th. For P11, this is between Nico Arvilomi and Adam Mariak. Nico Arvilomi with quite a good exit, but a better exit by Adam Mariak. Remember, the line is quite a long ways down. Will he be able to do so? He's closing it, but not fast enough. So P11 goes to Nico Arvilomi. P17 side by side. That one is between Hector Godet and uh, Brian Sabelski. Let's see who can get the better drive out of the last turn. It is Hector Godet. Is Brian Sabelski able to get back at him or not? Seems like that is a no, sir, as Hector Godet is able to defend that position. And as the last P17 
few cars are coming over the line, we take it to P22. Let's see who is able to sneak in ahead there. Robert Mason trying to get that one away and he does indeed so coming over the line. There he goes ahead of John Nielsen in P23. But as the last few cars are coming over the line now, the racing might be over, but the show is far from done. We're gonna st we're going to quickly step aside for a few moments to take a breather, but we'll be back for a long road racing post show, post race show where we will run you down the unofficial finishing order, talk to some drivers, and close off an eventful race. So don't step away too far. As GSRC will be back shortly. We welcome you all back to the Long Road Racing Post Race Show, streaming into your home on the Global Sim Racing Channel. As Mazda's technical business partner, Long Road Racing is the exclusive builder of the real-life Global MX-5 Cup Car. Whether you race, drive enthusiastically, or just get excited about cars, Long Road Racing offers professionally engineered vehicles and proven performance solutions for you. Find out how to get a how they can help you by visiting www.longroadracing.com. And yeah, we were talking, we were saying it earlier, and uh, during the break, it's just ever so exhausting. A race that wasn't all that exhausting for Maxim Boomvish as he led the race by 5.4 seconds over Robert Hartley to sneak away with yet again a second position over Sonic Engine from 12th to third for him. Marcelo Pagna fourth place and we had a bit, little bit of a gap 13 seconds 
to Christian Lindroth down in 5th position. Clifford Evans 6th place, Dirk Fiedermann 7th, Ronnie Kotz 19th to 8th, Stephen van Opstel, he went the wrong way from 5th down to 9th and Graham Sanders rounding up your top 10 from 39th. As we fade towards page 2, we got Nico Arvalomi in the 11th position with Adam Mariak in 12th. Nick Cardi hanging on to the 13th position from 21st on the grid. Melina Mann making it up to 14th with Ionis Mumaludis recovering from a spin to finish 15th. 16th was Arturi Serrati with Hector Goddard in 17th. Brian Zabelski in 18th. Peter Vostrel 19th in the top 20, rounded out by Christina Nazarek. Blackjack goes to the 43 machine of Alaric Van and Boss along. Uh, in 22nd, it's Robert Mason, Rui Coimbra, star in 27th, down, uh, he's finished in 23rd. Nicholas Gonick, 24th, John Nicholson rounding out your top 25. Yane Terro, 26th, Alex Hunt, the last car on the lead lap on 27th. Carmen Masses Torres, a car that did not finish but gets ranked with a 28th position, Simon Erpeldink, 29th, and 30th goes to the 220 of Mark Reitman. Jack Myers was the first one outside of the top 30 with Lawrence Coleman, the final car one lap down in 32nd. 33rd belonged to Jackson Robillard after an incident that dropped him from third on the grid initially. Uh, 34th on track was Tom Athan with Corey Hartz in 35th. 36th with Peter Knowles with Jarrett Liebert in 37th. 38th along with Steve Hefford. And David Hampson was in 39th with Lewis Morga rounding out your top 40. As you probably have realized, we're well within the DNFs here already. Diogo Venes, 41st. Brian Holmes gets credit at 42nd position. Brian Molitor, 43rd. Liam Sheen, 44th. He's also the last card to take the green flag. Frank DeAngelis and Casey Drake did not be the green flag down in 45th and 46th position. Christian Lindrod will be the first one to speak to us after a very exciting race. And Christian, we have to say it, you kept it very uh, clean and very quiet for pretty much 90% of the race and then you turn on the heat. One, two, are you hearing me? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah, nice, nice. I'm very uh, excited about this uh, interview. I've never been <laughs> in interview but <laughs> in English, so let's hope my rally, rally English is good enough to understand. <laughs> nah, don't worry, if not, I'm going to be the translator here. But yeah, Christian, uh, as I said, you kept it quiet for pretty much most of the race, and then you really turn on the heat trying to go for that p5 and it paid off in the end how did it feel to you uh yes yeah uh, i was trying to save my tires for the end i i saw guys were really battling and uh, um much the tires don't like it too much if you go lap after lap and fight all the time so i was trying to be clean and uh race that way that i can in the end maybe maybe took few positive positions and uh that that quite nicely went like i wanted to yeah pulling off the strategy like a pro there now the big question is coming from uh lime rock park onto road america how does it feel like especially the laps how do you prepare for such a change of pace um well Everybody of us I racers, of course, love Road America, and I've been racing here much more than in Lime Rock, which I don't <laughs> actually like very much. But this, this this track is one of the best in the world, in my opinion. Well, there you've heard it, the best track in the world, if it goes by Christian Lindrod. Thank you so very much for the great show you've put on. Thank you so very much for talking to us. Have a great rest of your day yeah can i can i say a few thanks sure sure go ahead go ahead oh okay i i, I must of course thank my uh teammates they 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 are so great guys and it's it's wonderful and very fun to practice together and that's that's uh they are like uh 50 percent 
uh, about this result is because of them. So thank you guys and let's let's continue this way. Well, there you have it. Team uh, teamwork makes the work what go round for him and Chris Wobby is not gonna catch up with Ionis Mumalutis. All right, meeting up with my personal eye racing hero, Ionis Mumalutis. Ionis, a, a great run for you there for a little bit, and then you guys got tangled up there towards the end. Tell us about the incident. Yeah, it was such a shame. Um, it was um, John was uh, desperate and very aggressive to get back up um, after the incident in uh, second lap when we were three white um, on that left hander. Uh, unfortunately, um, it seems that I pushed out um, the person in between us and he pushed in from the side. So um, they got out of the track. I lost the draft with Sonny Kanshin and uh, he caught back up. And when we then caught back up to the draft of um, Dirk Federman and Clifford Eben, um, unfortunately, um, after I've been a little too aggressive, I've got to say, I think you guys saw me go through the grass to overtake uh, um, that one person there. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't line up this car properly. I got into the back uh, and uh, pit maneuvered to the person in front of him, which unfortunately was the person that was side by side with me. Now, it looks like you made a, a pretty solid recovery. Um, how How would you say your day went overall? I think uh, for our team, both mine and Dirk Federman's team, um, our driving was superb. Um, we were not um, too uh, too held back. We were not too aggressive. Um, but of course, elbows out and uh, only give the person next to you um, as much room as he requires. Um, our driving was great. Unfortunately, um, both of us uh, didn't have... Um, the luck needed to uh, finish high in the race. Um, it was 7th for Dirk, 15th for me. Uh, I get one point. Um, I wouldn't say this was my luckiest race ever, but uh, I've had worse. All right. And uh, coming up, we got uh, some interesting tracks left in the schedule. How are you feeling about the rest? Uh, the schedule... For Big C's, is, uh, it's quite different than the schedule that we've got for the AMC. But, uh, I mean, Watkins Glen is a track everyone knows, uh, again in the United States. Um, I look forward to it. I've never personally driven the uh, the layout without the bus stop, but I'm uh, pretty confident that we can pull it off. Uh, racing for the AMC Week uh, 1 was absolutely great here. Um, there was also the week in which I was leading and then I spun, which... Uh, it's not so great, um, but uh, yeah, there's great uh, tracks coming up. All right, well, we wish you best of luck as the season goes on, and now we're going to throw things back over to Stefan to close. All right, thank you. And it's going to really be interesting to see these cars go at it on the classic boot layout of Watkins Glen. But before we head off, uh, we would like to thank everyone on the track today for a great show, and especially Clifford Evan for organizing this league and contracting with the GSRC to broadcast it. Right now on your screen, you can see all of the companies that provide us with their great hard and software GSRC uses to deliver you the best possible show. Additional thanks go to Chun Lalon, who provides us with a great masterpieces. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her Big C's MX5 Challenge will return in one week's time for round four from Watkins Glen, as I mentioned. iRacing and GSRC will be there. We hope you'll be too. The next coverage by GSRC will be of the Autobahn Sports Car Challenge from Road Atlanta. Coverage will air tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Eastern over at the iRacing Sports Network. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, please visit us at globalsimracingchannel.com. You can also find us on the social media platforms, Twitter with at GSR channel, Facebook at facebook.com slash global simplicity channel, or on Instagram at GSRC underscore gram. All of the upcoming races for our other series are right now sliding across your screen, so check them out and mark them out down on your calendar to not miss another second of exciting racing action. If you haven't done so yet, then please do become a YouTube subscriber, hitting that red subscribe button just below this broken Maybe even hit that bell to get notified 
when the next go live with more exciting races. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Sean, Chris and Dougie, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in as Maxime Boomvish took away the victory in round 3 from Road America. With that said, until next time, Severus and sayonara, and as always, race hard, race clean, and we'll see you on the track.